cooperation. I want to thank the regional group for putting forward uh, this very important motion. Disabled citizens are being let down by this government, which has shown a shocking lack of political will to, uh, to prioritise the needs their needs. It has been uh, 10 years since the uh, discontinuation of the mobility allowance and the motorised transport grant for, uh, for new applicants in 2013, and the government has yet uh, to prov uh, provide um, a fair and equitable replacement for that scheme, Minister. And it's been six years since the last government committed to reviewing all transport and mobility uh, schemes uh, for people with disabilities. Yet there has been no progress made towards improving options for transport uh, to, to work or to employment supports for people with uh, disabilities. The Minister of State, you, Deputy Rabbit, you have uh, yet again initiated another interdepartmental inter group to examine transportation issues as if we don't know enough about it. I mean, this is only whitewashing and paying lip service and creating confusion. This is a grave violation of the, of the fundamental human rights of people with disabilities. Access to transportation on an equal basis with others is a right recognised uh, by the international human rights uh, uh, standards. It's pretty basic, you know, we should all adhere uh, to that. It is unacceptable that uh, disabled citizens, especially the, those in rural areas, as Deputy Noel mentioned, continue to face immense difficulties in accessing public transport. We don't have it, first of all, and where we have it, you have to give a day's notice or maybe two days' notice in some cases, and it's just not uh, good enough while the government fails to provide a personal transport scheme that meets their needs. It is illogical to me that a child can be, per, uh, can be provided transport at, to their educational facilities, and we welcome that and we support that, but as soon as they arrive at 18, they are abandoned, just left there in limbo, hoping the family might be able to, uh, uh, the family to fit in whatever way they can. This is totally unacceptable, it's a scandalous situation. Parents of young adults with disabilities have enough to worry about in terms of where their young uh, person is going to attend the day service without, uh, without the worry of how they're uh, actually going to get there. And we know also that they're worried about these people for when they get old themselves and who's going to look after them or help them in any way. The measure of society is how we treat our most vulnerable. And this is yet uh, another example of how our state is failing our disabled citizens. I'm calling on the government to take immediate action uh, to implement a fair and adequate transport scheme that um, ensures equality, accessibility, inclusion for disabled citizens in all sectors of society. And I mean that. And mention has been made by many speakers of the, the, the primary medical cert. Like the issues around getting that certain and, and being rejected for uh, silly stuff areas is, is just uh, not acceptable. Like the difficulties getting transport for able-bodied people in rural Ireland is, is, is a huge issue. Not to mind to imagine that for people with disabilities, it's just not acceptable. And another inter interdepartmental report and looking at this gathering dust now in some office are still sitting is not the answer. And it's so frustrating and so disingenuous. We have targets to meet, uh, a duty bound to meet, I think is, is, is 6% we're supposed to meet uh, by 2025. So we're barely meeting the targets that are set for us at the moment, as Deputy Kelly and others mentioned, of 3%. And uh, how are we going to jump? We clearly are not. We're more worried with gimmicks and schemes and all kinds of areas around the greening and the cunning of our community than we are dealing with their needs. And in this area, Minister, you are in charge and privileged to be in charge of disabilities. Surely you'll do something to make, uh, to return, especially the, the, the motorised transport grant. It operated, uh, I suppose there was hitch, uh, hitches and we all were involved in helping people, assisting people, but it was there. The fact that there's no grant there now since 2013, no new applicants can, can, can join that scheme. That's abject and utter discrimination against new uh, applicants. It's just totally un unimaginable that a state could do that. We have, um, like, and, and everything is matters of scale. I know the Count Corner met uh, the, the, the candidate from, from Belarus, uh, whose husband was a candidate yesterday, and the appalling tragedies that are going on out there, and she got the temporary peace awards, and I accept that. Her husband's a, a political prisoner. But we have our own problems here, and we have our freedom in 100 years, and we're not treating our people very fair. Well, we must look and support all those groups and people, and persecuted people. In a way, uh, disabled people are being persecuted, and their families, because they're not being, uh, they have to fight every inch of the way. 
every hour of the day. And the biggest worry is for parents and guardians is that they're getting on in years and who is going to advocate, who is going to try and look after and care for their adult young, uh, adult uh, children now and going into manhood or womanhood and going into the future. It's an appalling vista I would put, put it to you, Minister. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um,